If you're feeling bored and you don't know what to paint, today I have another autumn delight for you. In our 50 Ways to Fill a Sketchbook series, we're painting a watercolor apple tree. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel we get creative together. Today I have a really fun and simple apple fall watercolor for you and yes it is part of my 50 ways to fill a sketchbook series. This series is all about simple fun projects that are just perfect for when you don't know what to paint or draw and you need a little kick of inspiration. Something that's not too complicated. We've done like abstracted roses and cats and we even developed our own character. Most recently we did this fun autumn floral bouquet which I highly recommend. It is such a great beginner project as is this one. This one is a good bang for your buck as I always say. So let's get started. Here are your supplies. You need your watercolor sketchbook or paper. You need a little bit of washi tape and you're going to take that tape and you're going to make a little square or small rectangle in the center of the page. You'll also need a couple uh, round paint brushes, like a number eight and a number four, something like that. Just these are great beginner brushes. They're your all purpose friendly paintbrush, good for everything. You'll also need a set of watercolor paints. And if you're using the Muno set, here are the colors I'm using I've got gray green, deep phthalo green, a bit of uh, red, and then Van Dyke brown. I did mix the red and the brown. And I also have French gray and cobalt blue and they're kind of mixed together a little bit there at the bottom as well. Finally, you need a pencil and that's what we're starting with. We're going to draw or sketch out a tree branch. Kind of think if you're looking up into a tree, what the branches would look like fanning out against the sky. Before we really get into this, a friendly reminder, I have a watercolor e-course. It's perfect for the absolute beginner. We discuss supplies, brushwork, floral painting, all of it. And I have a new e-course coming up that's a little bit more intermediate, all about flowers and developing your own style. If you've been thinking about maybe taking that first step and watching the first e-course, now is the time so that you'll be ready when the new one drops. Head over to my website, it's only $49. That's a very competitive price and you'll have lifetime access. Shadycampbell.com, check it out after today's video. To begin, we'll paint a wet into wet sky. We're going to take a very light gray on our brush and begin to wet the entire square. You can paint right over that tape. It's not going to let any water seep through. And we're going to release a little bit of the gray and the cobalt blue into the wet area. And that's called wet into wet watercolor painting. And it's really fun because it gives you this very organic, natural blend of color. You don't always quite know what the pigment is going to do. And it's a great technique for painting things like sky, clouds, water. So put some gray in some areas, some cobalt in others. And again, don't overthink it. Next, we'll let that begin to dry, but we're not gonna let it dry all the way. We want the area to be lightly wet. So not sopping wet, not puddle wet, just lightly wet. Then we're going to take some of that green in our smaller round brush. I'm using a number four and we're going to paint leaves. And my leaves are like a single brush stroke. So one swift motion of the brush makes a little leaf and you can see that because the paper is lightly wet, these leaves, they kind of blur a little bit. Now, if the sky has already begun to dry, the leaf will just be what it is. The paint and pigment is not going to blend or move at all, and that's okay too. The result is going to be some really blurry, organic leaf shapes, as well as some leaves that are a little bit more precise. Now, don't add too many leaves because we want space to paint the apples. What we're gonna do next is remove all that tape. You've got a nice clean border now and we can continue on with the rest of the painting. Everything's dry and we're ready to add the apples. I'll grab a little bit of a very watery light red on the end of my small brush and we're going to paint these perfectly imperfect circular shapes. Think of looking up at an apple tree, how all the apples would be very different and a little bit strange. And I'm using a very light watery red so I can build up darker color later. 
And if you look at my palette here, I've got a red that's mixed with a little bit of brown and then a, another area of red that's mixed with a lot of brown. So I'm able to pull from different shades of red and just make these messy apple shapes. I've got lots of room. I'm giving it some thought, like I want them to be spaced out and yet I also want some to be clustered together. I want it to look like harvest time in the fall. I want everything to look very natural. And that's the type of stuff you wanna be thinking about. It's also fine if you wanna paint some sort of semicircles or half apples, because we are going to fill this entire area in with lots and lots of leaves. So we wanna make sure that um, Maybe some of the apples look like they're just peeking out from behind the foliage. Speaking of foliage, I'm going to rinse my brush and pick up a nice highly pigmented gray green or green gray. So because I haven't mixed as much water in now, these leaves are very dark, they're highly pigmented, and they're going to look really beautiful and stand out really nicely against those lighter, more watery, blurry leaves. So with watercolor, you always wanna start light, maybe start a little blurry, work a little wet into wet, and then you're going to build and build. You're going to layer with wet on dry, you're going to go darker, adding more contrast, and working wet on dry also allows you to be very precise. Since I'm working on dry paint or paper now, every brush stroke just stays where I place it. So that's a great way to approach your watercolors. Start loose, start light, the two L's, and then we're going to add more precision and more contrast as we continue the painting. With watercolor, you can never go backwards. You can't add those highlights in later. Well, maybe a little. We'll talk about that at the end of the video, so keep watching. I've got a little secret for you. But uh, you want to always start light and work darker and more precise as you move through your painting. And all of this stuff that we're talking about, it's the type of thing that you learn as you work through these paintings and as you become a, a, a more proficient artist. You'll learn it from me on YouTube. And if you wanna get on the fast track and kind of get all this info and get it in one spot, that's when I think my watercolor e-course really comes in handy. It's just like, you don't have to go through all the YouTube videos and glean these little tidbits little by little. You can get it all in one spot, so that's over on my website. As I said, it's only $49. Uh, what am I doing here? We're taking a little of that Van Dyke Brown, again, just using the smaller round brush, and we're painting over those initial pencil lines, those sketchy branches that we had uh, drawn in right at the beginning of our painting. And you just take your, your paintbrush and carefully go over them, maybe wiggle the brush a little so that the branches don't look too straight or too smooth. Again, the idea is organic, perfectly imperfect. And with that done, we'll pick up a little bit of a darker red. So this means a red with a little less water or maybe a little bit more of that Van Dyke brown mixed in. And we're going to start adding the darker color onto the apples. So the light red, that will serve as a base. That will be the color of the highlight on the apple. Now we need to add the rest of the color, add the low lights, add the, add the dark color contrast because the apples they look too watery we want them to be quite a bit darker and we'll use that initial light red wash as the uh, highlight the area of the apple that's catching the sunlight so leave a little of that lighter red showing through and we're just going to add lots and lots of darker almost brownish red a really pretty autumn color and that's all there is to it just play around have fun think perfectly imperfect I'm actually right in the middle of recording and creating a new watercolor e-course and the new one is all about flowers and oh my gosh, it's something I've been meaning to make since I made the initial watercolor e-course for beginners three years ago. This one is much more intermediate, really teaches florals and how to figure out your own style. I'm putting so much of myself into it and I, I just can't wait for you guys to, to experience it and see it. So I'm really excited. To finish this painting, I decided I needed a little more cloud in the bottom here. So I just took a filbert brush and I, I grabbed a bit of French gray and I'm kind of dry brushing some clouds, just making some almost scuff marks on the page. 
I did take a little brown on the tip of my round brush and put in a few more branches. Those are just kind of the finishing details. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush. The painting is basically done, but I want to share that little tidbit with you uh, that I mentioned before. If you need to add highlights and you miss them, so you want to add light on dark, which is kind of impossible in watercolor painting, all you need is a little bit of white gouache. We'll put that paint on the palette. It comes out the consistency of toothpaste. You're going to mix in a little bit of water. You want it soupy consistency. And just take it on a clean brush and we can add those highlights. Gouache is very, very similar to watercolor paints, so it works beautifully with them. And this is a great little trick for adding highlights after the painting is already complete. You can kind of work backwards in this way. That's my super important secret tip for you, and I think it's going to make all the difference, really make your painting come to life. Thanks so much for watching and for being here. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and help me get to a million.